This is Ghana. Have you ever wondered what happens on a Wheels for the World distribution? First, we shouldn't forget that a lot of work goes on before a team even steps foot on a plane, from reconditioning wheelchairs to transporting them in a container halfway around the globe. The team's first day often involves lots of sorting and organisation. Often, this means physically emptying wheelchairs from the shipping container. But on this trip, the wheelchairs had already been offloaded and stored with a local partner organisation in Ghana. Even so, the chairs were checked and sorted into groups for each day's planned distributions. Although our local charity partners have done some pre-assessment work, so we have an idea of the wheelchair volumes and sizes potentially required each day, it's not an exact science. And the information isn't always as accurate as a therapist would like. The team has a limited choice of wheelchairs, and this is dependent on what chairs have been donated to the charity in the first place. For example, children's chairs are often limited, and the teams often have to be creative, as you'll see later. Wheels works with local partners in country, and in the case of Ghana, Wheels for the World has worked with Ellen for many years, who runs an organisation called Light Outreach. The local partners organise the locations and the wheels team bring the chairs and the expertise. At each location, we started by offloading and organising the chairs as well as setting up the location for the day's distribution. The admin team plays a key role. They are typically the first point of contact for those who come to a distribution. They take the names and details of those who have come, and if possible, match people against any pre-registration information we have. Once registered, we issue a numbered ticket, which is then used in combination with their name to help the therapists and bring a little NHS-type organisation to the process. Those who come hoping for a wheelchair wait patiently, and in many cases, many will wait the whole day in the hope they will get a wheelchair. The therapists have their own stations and will assess each person to gain an understanding around their history of disability. It's worth noting that a key component of the distribution is the interpreters. They are invaluable and without them of course it will be almost impossible to have a successful distribution. In Ghana, there are a range of languages in use, typically Ewe and Chi, although there are other local dialects, and this is highly region dependent. English is used in some places, but it's not so commonplace. Once a therapist has assessed their patient's needs, they would look to find a suitable wheelchair. With a limited selection, this can be a challenge. The therapists don't work on their own though, it's a team effort. Many come with sticks as a walking aid, and in some cases this may continue to be the best thing for them going forward. Giving someone a wheelchair who was previously walking with the aid of a stick could make the situation worse, so a wheelchair isn't always the best option. Sometimes a chair or mobility aid just isn't available. We take many things for granted in the Western world, and whilst Wheels for the World sometimes has children's wheelchairs, it's not a given. In these cases, sometimes the best thing, and only thing we can give, is some love. In such cases, however, it may be possible for the therapist to offer some guidance to the parents or guardians. This could be something simple, like stretches for example, which could greatly help either increase mobility or prevent further deterioration of a condition. Even when a suitable chair is found, it quite often needs some modifications, and this is where the role of the techie comes in. Although sometimes on a trip, we have experts like Martin, who specialises in building wheelchairs back in the UK, you don't always have to be an expert. If you're good with your hands, know your way around a toolkit, 
and like problem solving, then you could likely do it too. The chairs or mobility aids often need modifications or sometimes something completely bespoke is made. In Ghana, we met Naomi. Back home, you would rarely if ever see anyone with such a disability due to the treatments available. It's heartbreaking to see. The team, and particularly Martin, did their best to essentially make her a platform so she wasn't on the floor and could be moved around much easier. Little things can make a profound change to someone's life here. Once the techies and therapists have done their jobs, a photo's taken. That's usually my role. The pastor on the team then offers them prayer and a Bible, often in their local language. One of the main aims for Wheels for the World is showing God's love through the gift of a wheelchair. So the pastor's role is a key one. Those we've been able to help still have to get back to where they live. That could be on the back of a lorry, a bike, being pushed, or even propelling themselves. Africa is a harsh environment, especially for wheelchairs. There's limited public transport, there are no ramps, or even pavements for that matter. When it rains, many roads just turn to mud. The next time you walk down the street and see someone in a wheelchair, or walking with crutches perhaps, maybe you could spare a prayer for those with disabilities in Ghana and other parts of Africa. And perhaps you can help by giving a donation or getting involved. Mm -hmm.